The defense that Herb Jones has been showcasing throughout the New Orleans Pelicans playoff series against the Phoenix Suns has been, quite honestly, unbelievable. To be this sharp and conscious of what the offense is doing and what he needs to do to prevent them from doing what they want isn't something that comes around very often. This play starts off with this Spain pick and roll, with Chris Paul ultimately kicking it to Landry Shamit, who then kicks it to Bridges. But let's rewind for a second. Herb Jones starts out the play up here, but if we track him on this play, he goes from all the way at the top and then all the way to the corner where he's ultimately going to get the block on Bridges three point attempt. That's an insane level of effort and awareness of how a play could unfold that we seldom see from rookies. He may have been forced off of his on-ball defensive matchup, but he had the instincts to follow the play and relocate to make a high level effort play. On this play, he actually sags off of Cameron Payne once the ball goes to Chris Paul, and you can see he actually recognizes that the pass is likely going to go over there, going as far as pointing it out. I want to note something that he does on the jump where he can test the shot. Notice how he doesn't close out entirely. He actually stops a fair distance inside of the arc to begin his block attempt. The reasoning for this is that if he closes out entirely, by the time he gets there, the ball will already be in the air and he's not going to have any chance to block it because the release will have already happened. By jumping now instead of later, he can get a higher jump and be able to reach the ball while it's still on the way up instead of being too late. That's a 23 year old thinking to do something like that. We see that from guys who have been in the league for a while and have contested a billion shots by that point, but this is a kid out there doing things that some guys take years to learn. There's something else that I've been picking up on throughout the series that's kind of difficult to see unless you're really only paying attention to Herb Jones and who he's guarding on any given possession. Here's an example. He's on Chris Paul in the corner and normally a floor general like Chris Paul is going to be all over the court looking to create offense, get somebody a good look, but he's got Herb Jones on him and he's just standing in the corner watching the play unfold. So what am I getting at by pointing this out? The prospect of even having Herb Jones guarding you can not only make it difficult for yourself to effectively take part in the offense, but it can also discourage your teammates from roping you into the offense because they know that Herb Jones will immediately be there to create problems. The best way I can describe this is like two magnets that have the same poles as one another. If you try and stick these magnets together, the magnets are going to repel. Herb Jones defense is one magnet and the offense is another. He's such a strong defender that it repels the offense away from wherever he's at on the court. Whatever the opposite of scoring gravity is, that's what Herb Jones has. He's essentially eliminating opposing players' ability to effectively partake in the offense by completely cutting them off from the ball and putting them on an island. We talk about scoring gravity, the idea that an offensive player can pull defenses towards them due to the threat of their scoring ability. Whatever the opposite of that is for defense, that's what Herb Jones has. He's able to keep the ball out of his matchup's hands due to the threat of his defensive ability. Like on this play, he's going against Chris Paul and he fights over the screen. Chris Paul is playing this very, very safe, not making a move to the basket because Herb Jones is there cutting off the lane and keeping the ball as far away from Herb as possible in his right hand. Chris Paul gives up the ball to Bridges to let him try to make something happen instead. Maybe I'm overthinking things a bit, but it really does feel like Herb has enough defensive talent that guys don't even want to deal with him when they have the ball in their hands, so they either relocate to the corner away from the play, or they give the ball up as soon as possible so they don't have to try and go against him. His nose for steals in this series has been awesome as well, with him showcasing his awareness of passing lanes and how to bait the other team into bad passes. On this inbound play, it's going to look like Herb is guarding Cameron Johnson a bit further up the floor, and Herb sells his commitment perfectly and Crowder tries to make a pass to Bridges, but Herb is going to jump the lane and take the ball to the hoop for an and one bucket in transition. Outside of his nose for the ball and his high level effort, there's even more going on when he's showing his on ball ability against shot creators. Although Devin Booker is currently out, we can still get an idea of what he was doing when having to guard him. On this play, he's going to shade Devin Booker towards the baseline, and it may look like he's giving Booker a favorable angle to drive. 
but Herb knows that he has Jonas Valanciunas there to help him as well, so he's able to force Booker into a fairly difficult jumper that results in a miss. Here you're going to see the Suns run this action for Crowder to flare to the weak side perimeter. Herb does a great job of fighting under Aiton's screen, and he obliterates Crowder's drive, resulting in him putting up a low percentage fall away mid-range shot, something that Crowder isn't exactly known for taking or making. Again, on this play, the Suns run a pin down for Booker to get the ball up top. You'll actually see Herb juke out Aiton as he's setting the screen, giving him a really easy job of maneuvering around it, allowing him to easily get back on pace with Booker to contest the floater. Now, even though Booker makes the shot, it's still some textbook defense on how to fight over screens and contest without fouling. I could sit here and talk about Herb Jones' defense all day, but his offensive skills so far this series has shown through more than a lot of people probably expected it to. Now, he's averaging 11 points per game on 60% true shooting, and he's been a pretty major piece of the puzzle for them offensively as far as connecting everything together and being the glue between the primary pieces of Ingram, CJ, and Valanchunas. This play gives a good idea of what I mean by a connector. We've got CJ with the ball up top and Ingram over in the corner and Valanchunas in the middle. Herb is between the two on the perimeter. When CJ gets the ball to Valanchunas and then Valanchunas passes to Herb, Herb is aware of the double team up top and the fact that Crowder, Chris Paul, and Cam Johnson are all collapsed onto Jonas and Herb makes a lightning fast pass to Ingram in the corner for an easy three points. He does a similar thing here, being on the perimeter when he gets the feed from Jackson Hayes and then he immediately slings it to Brandon Ingram for another easy corner three. This is what I mean by a connector. He's a glue that keeps their offense connected from one player to another. Although he may not score a ton of points or be creating his own shot or facilitating the offense through his ball handling ability, he's fantastic at bridging the gaps between their players. This concept of a connector can be taken even further with his cutting and driving ability as well, and also his three-point shooting ability. He's shooting 43% from three in the playoffs so far, and he's been a lights-out catch-and-shoot guy. Think of a Dorian Finney-Smith type player, a guy that can attack closeouts and hit corner threes at a really high level. That's how he's operating for them in the scoring department, and he's doing it all at a really high level. So the Pelicans are now working with a generational defensive prospect alongside their already two star level players in Ingram and CJ, with the prospect of Zion Williamson potentially returning to the lineup either this year or next. Imagine a small ball front court of Zion Williamson and Herb Jones. That would be so much fun, not just for the defense that Herb Jones provides, but also for the offensive ability that he's showcased throughout the season. And let's be clear, Herb Jones is a generational defensive prospect. Do not get it twisted. He can guard one through four at a really high level, and as he bulks up, I expect that versatility to expand to even being able to guard certain fives in the right situations. There's no doubt in my mind that Herb is going to be a lock for multiple all-defensive first-team selections throughout his career, and I'm pretty confident saying that he's going to notch at least one Defensive Player of the Year award in his career. He is the perfect modern defender, and he's a testament to the value that some GMs seem to ignore when it comes to drafting older rookies. He's been able to make an impact from day one, and he's a perfect addition to this Pelicans team. 